Things are awesome. House is moving right along. We got this super insulated envelope we're working on here. A little more time than I had planned, but hey, that's it's all going to be worth it in the end. What I wanted to do was take a few minutes and show everybody what's involved in the process that we're doing over here. Uh, what we want to do is build a conventional frame and then we insulate the exterior of that. And I'll just take you right over here and we'll kind of see what I'm talking about. What we've done is built a conventional frame 2x6 as we showed you earlier and had sheathed that with plywood. Why plywood? Plywood breathes. The idea is whatever moisture is in the wall cavity, we want to get it out. And then what we did is put this fully adhered air barrier on top. And so the idea with this product is it prevents infiltration. Instead of worried about mechanical fasteners, or everything else, this is fully adhered on there. And then what we've done is we found some reclaimed rigid insulation. This is polyiso. And uh, I planned on using four inches thick. Uh, the supplier, uh, the material comes and goes all the time. What he had in stock when I purchased it was inch and a half and two and a half. So we alternated layers of that inch and a half. So you can see we put the inch and a half on first. We use clips to keep it from uh, the fastener from penetrating into the insulation. These are more of a temporary. And then we put the two and a half inch, as you can see above it, on top of that. And then we covered that with plywood. That's what we did on the exterior wall. So as you can see here, we put on the first layer, but we staggered the joints and the seams and we caulked all in between or spray foam in between everything. And then we covered it with plywood to make a solid nailing surface. You know, we could have done just uh, sleepers if we were doing horizontal siding like clapboards or something like that. But since we are planning on using a cedar uh, shake type material, we change the spacing. So a lot of times we like to have an even board at the top of the window so we change the spacing. The easiest thing to do is to put a cover sheet, you know. So we actually have another layer of plywood that we'll put over top of this insulation and that will be the nailing surface for that, uh, you know, cedar shake that we're doing. So as you can see, when we come over here, this is a little further along in the process. We've covered that rigid insulation with plywood. Again, why plywood? We want any moisture in this system to be able to work its way out to the outside. So again, we'll put fasteners into the framing material. We try to hit all the stud locations on there. And this gives us that solid nailing surface for us to put our cedar shake uh, siding on it to keep with that New England look that we have around here. Uh, I didn't mention before we actually put the siding on, we're going to put a, a, an air barrier or a vapor barrier again on top. We use a material to help prevent any type of moisture from infiltrating into this whole system, but still allow something to breathe back out. With the system and the way that we built it up, we had to make these extension jams for the windows right here. The idea with the extension jam is I got all that rigid insulation. I want to be able to put my casing around the windows, trim out everything, and it look conventional. So what we've done is shared the gap between uh, how thick that wall is from the inside to the outside. So now it doesn't look noticeable on either side that it's any more than the others. So what I've done here is just kind of do a quick representation of what we're doing. So imagine this being the outside wall that we're framing and this would be that roof going up on there. We're at a 10-12 pitch so it's around a 40 degree angle there that we have for our roof. So the idea is not only do we stagger the joints across the wall, we also stagger the joints where we meet. So imagine that if we put insulation on the front of the wall, say the inch and a half, we would do the same thing on the roof and that would come down and overlap that joint. Every layer of insulation that we apply, we always put some spray foam in between to really seal that joint. So between the overlaps and between the roof and the wall joints, we use a material there and we'll foam that whole thing. And so, okay, now we have a continuous layer between the, the wall all the way up to the ceiling over the roof. Then we would do another layer of insulation on the outside wall and then alternate that again with another layer on the roof. So you can see how that system works, that it really protects everything. There, it totally eliminates any leak path from the outside, basically we wrapped the insulation around the wall right up over the roof and done that. 
And then you say, well, that's all great, but how do I do my roofing material? So what we'll do is once we get this system to where we need, we'll put some sleepers, some two by fours on edge, and we'll use some very long screws to put that in there. We have some of these, these some eight inch ones. We'll do like every 12 inches. We'll go into the roof rafters. So we make sure we have strong attachment on there. And then when we get that whole system all done, that extends down and creates the overhang for this system. Because as you see how we do it, there is no overhang. We've actually cut that off and we framed on an overhang by over extending this and cutting this and doing a fascia on here. Now that creates our overhang. And then we would apply our plywood on top of that whole system. And this would be the nailing surface for our shingles. Well, you can see with this, now we have an air channel underneath here. So we have ventilation coming up all the way up to the ridge vent. With this system, I'm calling it a cool roof. So the idea is that the shingles never see a really high temperature. There's always air movement underneath of it, but yet we don't have air movement in our attic or in our framing system. That is all is tight. So you can see that this makes for an extremely robust system. We're starting with a strong two by six construction. We'll insulate inside those two by six cavities. And then outboard, we do this rigid insulation, you know, uh, each inch of this polyiso is a 6.2 to 3, depending on who you talk to. But just imagine that times four. That's quite a bit of insulation outboard, as well as what we have in the wall cavity. So we're, we're exceeding, uh, you know, R40 on the exterior wall. We have rafters that are 2 by 10 that will be filled with cellulose, just like the joist bays will be filled. And then again, that same insulation that we're putting on the walls, we won right over the ceiling. You can see this makes for a tremendous uh, barrier to keep air out and heat in and hopefully we'll be able to uh, manage this house with very little energy. So I, I just wanted to take a minute to kind of show you this kind of system, how we're doing it here, how the layers alternate, how we attach things. As you can see, you know, we also use clips and screws to hold everything in place, you know, depending on the type of material we're using. That way, even with that thick insulation, we could pull it all the way into the framing materials. And like I say, on the roof, where we're trying to get that sleeper, we have the added thickness of the two by. You know, here we have a long screw that will get in there and catch those, um, you know, our rafters up there and get a really good bite on that. It's kind of critical in the back because we're gonna put um, solar electric on top, PV panels, and we're worried about an uplift and stuff. Uh, we're going to do solar thermal on the back of the garage that is more conventionally framed, so not much of an issue. But really, we wanted to focus on a system that we thought that we could do local labor, be able to frame with local guys. And now we take that and then we can super insulate the outside. And this way, we'll get no conduction of heat on the inside. There'll be no moisture buildup or any type of that. We use material that allows to breathe instead of using a foil face material. Again, this is polyiso with two sides of a impregnated type paper, but it is permeable, small amount, but it is permeable. Moisture can work its way out. So we alternate the layers between that and the plywood and the type of system and the coverings that we use on everything is all vapor permeable. So again, that's a big concern is you don't ever want to trap moisture in a wall. Uh, uh, as we talked in a, a much earlier episode, we were looking at different ways of doing wall construction. We looked at thick walls or that double stud walls, building uh, another wall on the outside, spray foaming. We looked at all those and this seemed to make the most sense to me uh, for reliability, for strength. We're down here on the shoreline. We got to worry about high winds and, you know, occasionally get hurricanes and stuff like that. So by starting with a really good frame, structurally sound and then putting all this insulation on top and minimizing the penetrations that we have, I think we're gonna have an awesome system. With this type of system, I think we're really gonna minimize our carbon footprint. And that was the whole idea of building this eco-friendly home is to have that indoor comfort, low impact on the environment and, and a very low utility bill. So I think through this construction method, through the products we've chose during the construction phase, it, it really is really all pulling together. As we link all this in with the mechanical system that we're installing inside uh, to make sure that the air stays fresh and the floors stay nice and warm and comfortable 
uh, in the wintertime and the building is cool and dehumidified in the uh, summertime, that's all going to tie together for this package to really work well together. So I, I think that we've picked the right method and uh, it's moving along great.